the deployment of Russian troops on Belarus territory. And we must call it what it is. It is occupation. Lukashenko has shamed us all by allowing Belarus to be the launch pad for Russian missiles, which have killed thousands of innocent people in Ukraine. Now he wants to turn Belarus into a huge military base in order to terrorize Ukraine, Poland, Lithuania, and entire European Union and NATO. And they are already talking about the deployment of nuclear weapons in Belarus. This must not happen. Our position is clear. First, Belarus must end any participation in Russia's brutal war. Second, every Russian soldier must leave Belarus unconditionally. And third, all those involved in Russian attack on Ukraine from Belarus must be held accountable. Dear friends, there is another thing which I also learned. When changes happen, they happen quickly. Therefore, we have two tasks here. First, to make those changes happen as soon as possible. And the second, we have to be ready when they do happen. We mustn't give Lukashenko any time to breathe. We must keep relentless pressure on the regime. When you discuss sanctions, don't forget about Lukashenko. He is also a war criminal with a long record of horrific human rights abuses. We must deprive the regime of any loopholes that he can use to uh, avoid sanctions. We must stay united. Dictators will try to divide us. Lukashenko could play his usual card by trading political prisoners in exchange for lifting sanctions. Don't buy it. He will take the money and then start to arrest innocent people all over again. All parties must stand firm on sanctions. We must, take, we must make the Kremlin withdraw all Russian troops out of Belarus, out of Ukraine, Lukashenko might act like the Kremlin's puppet, but he doesn't represent the people. Belarus is not Russia. I ask you today to reject Lukashenko's fraudulent and deadly regime and work with us to build a democratic and free Belarus. Recognize the United Transitional Cabinet as the true representative of the people. We are ready to cooperate and implement joint projects within the Eastern Partnership and other programs. We have already established such cooperation with the Council of Europe. For the first time in its history, the Council of Europe will not work with the official government, but with our democratic movement. So we ask the European Parliament to do the same with Belarus. You know, in one of his last interviews about freedom, Alice Bilyatsky, our Nobel Prize winner, said, it's our duty that not only artists or writers, but every Belarusian should think about our future, how to rebuild our country, how to make our life safe and prosperous. This is where we need your help, dear European parliamentarians. Help us to show that Belarus is welcomed in Europe. Help us to draft a new democratic constitution and prepare new reforms and initiatives. Provide Belarusian students and young professionals with internships and scholarships. So help us to shape our future. You know, dear friends, I believe that a free Belarus will be the strongest possible sanctions against Putin's terror. And the best support for free Ukraine will be a 1,000 kilometer protective border with a liberated Belarus, no longer with a Russian colony. I'm sure that the path to peace in Europe is through freedom in Belarus. 
I'm sure that the path to peace in Europe is through victory in Ukraine. I know it's difficult and painful, painful path, but it is the right path. So let us walk it together. When we walk together, we are Europe. Thank you. Thank you so much, dear Svetlana, for these very moving words, very wise words, and the applause showed you how much we support you and all your colleagues of the democratic forces in Belarus. We will now have an exchange of views. I will first give the floor to the chair of the Delegation for Relations with Belarus, our dear colleague, Yorza Zolekas, for three minutes. Thank you, Chair. Uh, dear Mrs. Sikhanovska, dear colleagues, dear guests, thank you for giving me to the opportunity to intervene today uh, at this uh, committee meeting in association with the delegation in relation with the Belarus. Times are difficult, and it's important that various parliamentary bodies dealing with Belarus speak with one voice. I would like to underline today one simple fact. The political crisis in Belarus has a strong external dimension. It is not just a matter of concern for the courage, the Belarusian people who are fighting for democracy and dignity. It has touched us all. Not only has uh, Lukashenko absorbed power for two years, in addition, he has turned Belarus into the, a base for Russian imperialists and the world, despite the fact that more than 80% of Belarusian are actually opposed to, to it. Vladimir Putin is becoming all the more unpredictable as his army is losing on the battlefield. Also, the Belarusian army is neither ready nor willing to take part directly in the hostages in Ukraine. It is difficult to predict what will be the Russian dictator's next move and what will demand from his vassal Lukashenko. In this context, let me draw your attention to Lukashenko's recent illegal visit to the occupied Georgian region of Abkhazia in violation of international law and Georgia's sovereignty and territorial integrity. Also, I would like to mention that Ukrainian intelligence service reckoned that Lukashenko has approved the deployment of 20,000 Russian troops in the Belarus, which should worry us. And this Monday, he had ordered Belarusian troops to deploy with Russian force near the border with Ukraine. We cannot exclude either the deployment of Russian nuclear weapons onto the Belarusian territory. As I said, the internal and external dimension of this crisis are very much linked. This is why I welcome the creation in early August of the United Transition Committee led by Mrs. Sikhanovska, whom our parliament considered to be the real winner of the 2020 presidential election. I note with pleasure that the purpose of the Transition Committee are not only to facilitate the democratic transition and reestablish the constitutional order, but also to defend Belarus' independence and sovereignty by putting the end to the de facto occupation of Belarus by Russia. And let me conclude on warning by saying that the past months we have witnessed modest but real attempt by Lukashenko's regime to reach out to the Western countries and explore ways to reopen dialogue with us. In this respect, the EU must remain firm and not fall in this trap. As Mrs. Tikhanovka said, on the contrary, we must maintain our pressure, via sanction and hold the regime accountable for its numerous crimes. Thank you for your attention. Jivi Belarus. Thank you, Yozas, for your good words. And now I give the floor to the sending rapporteur on Belarus, our colleague Petros Ostrevichus. Thank you, David, and uh, most welcome, uh, Svetlana, and your team to the European Parliament's uh, AFED Committee. It's always a pleasure to see you and good to exchange and uh, deep our knowledge and probably come up with uh, further proposals on uh, our future cooperation. So with the uh, Lukashenko continuing crackdown on opposition and political prisoners and uh, indeed uh, civil society, so we see nothing more as uh, increasing prosecution and intimidation. It's something what uh, is completely unacceptable and our reaction must be uh, appropriate. Let me to ask um, uh, publicly, what some the, of the EU member states' representations do in Minsk? What they are looking for? 
why the some countries, member states, countries, uh, ambassadors are still in Minsk. Do they expect any good from Lukashenko and allow themselves to be humiliated every time, meeting with some, uh, indeed, uh, those who are on the side of the uh, regime? And not just the uh, EU member states, but, for example, Swiss as such. And I'm very critical about this. After the Lukashenko regime refused further accreditation to Dirk Schubel, EU ambassador to Belarus. Should we welcome the Belarusian ambassador to EU? Why he is still here? I mean, are we not responding, as Mr. Borrell recently said, too slow and too ineffectively? Are we to read just uh, papers' titles and not to make a uh, policy line uh, being imposed and implemented? I call on the efforts uh, to react and to ask for strengthening our line uh, <clears throat> of, uh, uh, you know, um, uh, uh, against the uh, Lukashenko regime and showing all political, diplomatic and other signs which must be, uh, you know, strengthened in this regard. And, Chair, uh, Mrs. Tikhanovska made a very strong statement asking us to look forward for further and increased cooperation with the opposition, democratic opposition of Belarus. We have to make some uh, steps uh, towards this, and we have to find appropriate means how not just to recognize the, because we have recognized you, I mean, there is nothing more to be done, but we have to establish some, uh, you know, uh, mechanism of our cooperation. I call in on the European Union, indeed, uh, to provide uh, needed financial assistance as well as uh, political decision to be made in order to see um, um, democratic opposition of Belarus representatives in, 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 in Brussels, other capitals of the European Union, as legitimate representatives of Belarus. Jive Belarus. Thank you, Petrus. I will now give the floor to further colleagues. We have to be a bit cautious of time because our next item will be at quarter past 11, so we have about 20 minutes left. In the moment, I have request to take the floor from seven colleagues. Sandra Kanyete, Michael Gala, Andreas Kabilius, and Alexander Jordanov, Thais Rauten, Dietmar Kirst, and Anna Fatiga. If we, if we stick to these seven, I would say I could ask you to do two minutes each, and then we have a round of replies from Svetlana Sikhanovskaya. Okay, two minutes each, and we kick off with Sandra Kalnieta. Thank you. Two minutes. It's too short, but uh, I will try. I will uh, begin with very personal uh, words, because dear Svetlana Tsikhanovskaya, as a woman in politics, former leader of independence movement of Latvia, I admire you. And I know also how difficult it is what you are doing now. All my respect and admiration. And it is evident that Ukraine will win the war. And this victory will open also the door for transformation of Belarus and, I hope, Russia. And also for the occupation of Belarus. And there is no doubt Lukashenko is a war criminal. I will not repeat what has been said. I co-sign what my colleagues said. But I um, learned that uh, uh, Ukraine's defense intelligence recently reported that Belarus is currently preparing the accommodation of 20,000 mobilized Russian soldiers. And uh, my questions are, are there any signs of slow but steady increase of draftees being called up to Belarusian conscript offices? Are there measures underway to prepare Belarusian infrastructure, barracks, uh, dormitories, etc., for long-term use um, of the airfields close to the Belarus-Ukrainian border? Could these preparations indicate a future intensification of Russian uh, and Belarusian uh, uh, military cooperation, and do you consider, uh, could you elaborate on how the structures of the democratic Belarusian forces look like now uh, with the reform of Coordination Council and creation of the United Transitional Cabinet? And to conclude, I would join those who congratulate Alice Belyowski on Nobel Peace Prize. Thank you. 
Thank you, Sandra. Thijs Routen. Thank you, Chair, and thank you, dear Svetlana Tsikonskaya, for your decisive European leadership. Your fight for sovereignty, democracy and freedom continues to remind the world that Lukashenko is illeg illegitimate and his regime must go and the Belarusian people demand change and the world must stand ready to help the moment for change finally arrives. So what steps could the European Union take to help you and your United Transitional Cabinet implement this change? My, my personal opinion is that we should not look at what we would normally do because we are not in a normal situation. We need to be creative and pragmatic in this exceptional situation to establish a formal as possible link with the Transitional Cabinet. Um, the fate of Belarus and that of Ukraine are directly related and your advocacy demonstrates this politically, like the Kalinowski regiment and those brave Belarusians who sabotaged the 24th February invasion demonstrate this in action. Now, Lukashenko, Lukashenko ramped up his delusional rhetoric of threats to Belarusian territory and the regime grouped with the Russian troops. We know that the vast majority of the Belarusian people opposes Russia's aggression and would refuse to fight. So what is your assessment of the likelihood of such invasion and what it would do with the people uh, in Belarus uh, itself? And uh, the last point, trade unionists and civil society have played a central role in the resistance movement to Lukashenko and Putin, both at the time of your election and after the full-scale invasion of Ukraine. But the regime cracks down on them relentlessly and the European Parliament adopted a resolution uh, in support on the trade union leaders in May. But what further steps can we take to support Belarusian civil society and trade unions, in particular those activists who remain uh, in Belarus? Uh, and of course, I also uh, think with great memory of the conversation that I had with um, Alex Bielecki um, two days after the uh, hijack of the Ryanair uh, plane. Uh, regretfully, he's still in prison, but I know that he will be free, like Belarus will be free. Thank you for your powerful leadership, and we stand with you. Jivier Belarus. Thank you. Thank you, Thais. Anna Fatiga, please. Thank you, Chair, Madam Tichanowska, dear Svetlana. Uh, once more, thank you for being with us. Thank you for sharing your uh, your views with us. Uh, I, I fully echo your your statement, and and I pledge to do uh, all I can, uh, whatever is in in my uh, possibilities to 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 support uh, your requests. Uh, we have to do. Um, our best here in the European Parliament to make relations with the uh, opposition uh, of Belarus, but now of uh, the, the transition, unified transitional government and the Brussels office that you announced uh, as official as possible, not only here in AFED, but, but also in, in other uh, formats of the European Parliament and elsewhere in institutions that are based here in Brussels in our respective member states as well. Um, uh, I would like to inform that on uh, actually uh, um, my requests, uh, not only poli my political group, but it al also the uh, COP and other bodies accepted the provision of, of a topic during the upcoming plenary session indicating the active role of Lukashenko regime in supporting Russian war of aggression on on Ukraine will be able to debate it in at length. Thank you. Next speaker is Michael Gala. Thank you very much. And it's good to have you back here in, in Brussels and that we address Belarus issue uh, apart from the war in Ukraine because it's in multifold ways interlinked. Uh, my question goes in the direction of uh, uh, the visa issues that he also addressed and that we should not stop uh, the issuing of visas. And, and my question is in this regard, um, 
uh, is the current situation acceptable, especially for those who would like also, for political reasons, like to leave the country? I mean, we have easy access for Ukrainians in general. Uh, Belarus, that's not the case as such, but is your practical impression that uh, all those who need to leave because they are under repression, that their situation is uh, acceptable to, to get into the EU? That's the one question. And the other thing uh, I would like uh, on, on your, the Coordination Council and now the new structure, so to say, shall I say, and kind of government in exile, um, uh, my question is whether you uh, consider the uh, the composition or also the the representation of the different democratic parties is that already uh, where it should be is it inclusive enough uh, and uh, uh, if not what what could be done and if so uh, i would welcome that of course thank you thank you michael next speaker is dietmar köster vielen dank herr vorsitzender ich spreche thank you chair i'll be speaking german Thank you. And thank you, Madam Tukhanovskaya, for having come along to our committee today and presenting the present situation in Belarus. I wish you all strength to continue with your fight against uh, for democ democracy and human rights, and the European uh, Parliament stands with you in all of your efforts. My comments are as follows. Uh, recently, we have seen that from the Russian side, there is actually an effort to coordinate more with Belarus troops, that there should be common tr troops from uh, Russia and Belarus. We see that this is a further escalation of the entire war. How do you see this matter? Do you think that Belarus Belarus is going to be sending troops to this war, and do you think that they're going to be directly involved in the conflict? I know that you yourself uh, were at the base, at, 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 at involved in this foundation of an anti-war movement in Belarus, and I know that you have also developed a number of activities in that vein. I know that you have uh, also uh, been involved in sabotage against the Russian war machine in Belarus, and there's a lot of activities that showing solidarity um, in Belarus against um, the Russian people and in favour of the Ukraine people. So I would be interested to hear what you uh, would, uh, how your opinion is from the position of the anti-war movement in Belarus, and do you think that this movement will be able to uh, succeed? And how? What can we do to support you? Also, there are many refugees from Ukraine going to Belarus. How are these refugees being treated in Belarus? Are there civil society activities set up to take in these refugees and to support them who are coming in from from Ukraine? Thank you, colleague Koster. Thank you, colleague Koster. The next speaker is uh, Mr. Kobilius. Well. <clears throat> Dear colleagues, Madam President, uh, Svetlana, really it's a pleasure and honor for us uh, to have your visit here. Definitely you are, you know, great and I would encourage you to stay strong despite the fact that Lukashenko is still, you know, here somewhere in, in Minsk. Uh, Democratic Belarus is also, you know, our interest, interest of EU, not only of uh, Belarusian people. Uh, it's not very clear you know how we can for time being remove Lukashenko but Ukraine victory can change a lot including collapse of Lukashenko regime what we can do inside of EU is to help you and ourselves for the future of democratic Belarus after Lukashenko will collapse and it's really great and I uh, congratulate that uh, while well, you established your transitional government and transitional government is uh, ready to establish its representative office in Brussels that's really a big, big step forward. And we in the Euronest delegation, which I am leading, uh, would be happy that your government delegation representing uh, Belarus would be present in the nearest uh, session of Euronest in December in, in, in Kishinev, in Moldova. So we shall, uh, we got your letter, and I think that together with yours, Solikas, we shall look how to make you know, things uh, 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 happening. And uh, the second point, I would say that what we can try to do, uh, and is this, uh, or not only can try, but really let's do it, you know, let's elaborate, you know, 
from both sides, from our side and, and your side, some kind of much more clear strategy. What will be the relationship of European Union with you know, democratic Belarus when the change will come? What kind of programs we should need to establish? How we shall move you know, towards you know, association agreements and so on and so on? So that would be a really very important job to be done. Thank you, Andreas. And the final speaker is our colleague Jordanov. Please. Thank you, Chair. I will speak Bulgarian. Mrs. Tikhanovskaya, I really liked what you said. You said that Belarus is not Russia. You also said that Lukashenko does not represent the people of Belarus. And of course, we should work together with the United Transition Cabinet of Belarus. Actually, our colleagues had a number of ideas how this can be organized. However, I have um, a preoccupation I will start with first. We all know quite well that dictators will not be there if they're not supported by their own people. So we should say it clearly, we should be frank. If there is a Putin in Russia in this war now, if there is a Lukashenko in Belarus, well, then this means that a large part of the people in Russia, in Belarus, are actually supporting these dictators. and. We should analyze this fact and we should see what is it that we can do so that these people can wake up, so to say. Actually, we saw that there are also other countries that yesterday supported Russia in the UN. We have to wake up these people to the values of democracy and freedom this is an obligation of the European Union. And now let me move on to my question. Is there a real threat that Lukashenko sends Belarus armies against Ukraine? Thank you. Colleagues, for your contributions. <laughs> Ms. Tikhanovskaya, may I ask you to sum up in about five minutes and answer the questions and the comments? The floor is yours, madam. Uh, thank you, uh, dear chair, and thank you for uh, all for your remarks and questions and, of course, for your warm words of support. Uh, you know, two years ago, I was speaking here in AFET, and uh, it was my first international visit and uh, my first actual speech. And since then, all time, I feel your solidarity and your support. So let me kindly ask you not to call Lukashenko the president, uh, not to call his regime Belarusian regime. And when you speak about the aggression against Ukraine, it's not Belarus, but Lukashenko's regime who became collaborant. So distinguish Belarusians and the regime. It's not the same. Language actually is very important. So uh, I will start to answer the questions with uh, Ukraine. You know, we have different uh, situations, but we fight the same evil. At least three battalions of Belarusian uh, military volunteers are on the front lines uh, in Ukraine. At least 15 volunteers have been killed uh, already. Uh, many Belarusian medics work hard to save uh, lives of uh, uh, Ukrainian soldiers and uh, actually civils. Recently, together with Annalena Bayerbock, we provided the mobile hospital to uh, Belarusian medics in Ukraine. Also, there are many uh, Belarusian volunteers who collect uh, evidence of the war in uh, Bucha and uh, other cities. And today, my representative, Valery Kowalewski, is in Kiev to establish official relationship with the uh, uh, governments, with the Verkhovna Rada. 
we have already opened office in uh, Ukraine, but we intend to uh, create an alliance between Ukraine and uh, democratic Belarus. Uh, on the issue of uh, political prisoners and repressions. Uh, after the war has started, repressions intensified, and they are even more than uh, back in 2020. Dozens of people detained every day in Belarus. Uh, no communication with the outside world. Uh, some people uh, have known about the war uh, with two months delay, actually. Uh, we also know that the cells are full with the military and officials. We don't know uh, even their names. Uh, regime is afraid of betrayal, and that's why they arrest their own people now, uh, which is the sign of, uh, I would say, desperation in some way. Uh, now to help political prisoners, so keep the topic high on agenda. Uh, adopt uh, sanctions on judges, uh, prosecutors, those who, who committed uh, crimes against uh, people in Belarus. You can also adopt political prisoners. It's, uh, it will take five minutes of your life you know, to write a letter or communicate with the family of uh, political prisoners, but it gives such a huge energy to uh, people, to people inside Belarus who sacrificed their freedom, uh, you know, in the sake for, of uh, free Belarus. Um, but it's evident that uh, without pressure, political prisoners will not be released. So I urge you to put demand on release of political prisoners everywhere. Uh, on diplomatic presence, you know, I think that it's not uh, right time to send ambassadors to Minsk. Don't present credentials. It's enough uh, to send sh uh, charge de fer. But don't um, do anything that will mean recognition of uh, illegal regime, illegitimate regime. Instead, uh, develop uh, diplomatic relationships with democratic Belarus. Uh, as we, you know, repeat, non-conventional times need non-conventional decisions. And now it's uh, high time to, uh, as you have already also mentioned, to be creative, to be inventive, and to have a like, different approach to the situation. Uh, on the issue of uh, Russian troops uh, entering Ukraine, you know, we do all possible to prevent it. We campaigned for seven months to explain uh, soldiers, you know, why Belar Belarus should support Ukraine. And we felt a positive response. You know, if Lukashenko decides to send uh, Belarusian troops to Ukraine, or if they, if they force the uh, Belarusian army to join the uh, Russian army, I think it will be political suicide for Lukashenko. Our soldiers will not fight uh, with the Ukrainians. They will defect, they will change sides, uh, they will escape. and. Uh, but anyway, we should uh, continue to remind Lukashenko that he will pay a big price uh, if he continues to uh, support Russian, uh, Russian invasion. As for Cabinet and uh, Coordination Council, uh, Lukashenko lost legitimacy and uh, doesn't represent Belarusian people anymore. The Cabinet aims to represent interests of Belarusians both in the country and outside. Cabinet is uh, almost formed already. We have six uh, representatives or ministers who work on different directions. The Coordination Council is in the process of reformation. Coordination Council will play the role of uh, proto-parliament uh, and its goal to be uh, in control of Cabinet. Half of the Coordination Council will be uh, represented by political parties and half will be represented by NGOs. And, uh, you know, we must develop really democratic structures in advance. We shouldn't give uh, any chance uh, dictatorship to repeat in our country. And thank you for your comment on visas. It's uh, very difficult uh, for Belarusian people to get visas in Belarus at the moment. People are often prosecuted even for having visa in their passport. Lukashenko even, uh, you know, introduced a law uh, prohibiting a large group of population to leave the country. So our goal is to make sure that visas are available for all 
people um, not involved in, in criminal activities uh, of the regime. So we ask you to not to impose visa ban. Opposite, help Belarusians to retain connection with Europe, show that European doors are opened for uh, Belarusian uh, people who are opposing the regime. So, uh, again, uh, thank you for supporting us. And uh, you actually, we have a long list of what can be done. But help us to bring regime to accountability and, as I said, keep the door always open for Belarusian people. Thank you. Dear Svetlana Tsikhanovskaya, thank you for your presence today here in the European Parliament, here in the Effort Committee. Thank you for your important remarks and the contributions by colleagues showed that members of this committee are following the developments in your country with great interest. We will continue our close cooperation with the democratic forces of Belarus. You can count on our steadfast support in your struggle for a free and democratic Belarus for as long as it takes. Shivi Belarus. Thank you. We're running late, colleagues.